Hi guys, in this video we're gonna see what is probably the most basic, the simplest algorithm you can think of to try to find the optimal solution in, in a certain space of candidate solutions. And this is called random search. And it essentially it consists in sampling a certain number of candidate solutions and selecting the best one in this sample. That, that, that's it. That's random search. So this is the extreme case of exploration. We're not using any knowledge of anything. We're not transferring knowledge from one uh, iteration to the next. It's just sampling and taking the best one in the sample. Let, let's look at the pseudocode a little bit more slowly. So we're going to start selecting an initial random candidate solution. And since we only have one so far, it has to be the best. So we're going to store it in a variable that we call best. And then we're going to repeat a number of times the following process. We're going to pick up a random candidate solution. In the first iteration, it would be a second random candidate solution, we're going to call it S for solution. And we're going to compare the quality of the best solution found up until now with the quality of the random candidate solution we just uh, draw. Um, and then if the quality of the random candidate solution we just obtained is better than the quality of the best, then the new best is the the random candidate solution we, we just drew okay so the, the the best basically the best so far is stored in the variable best and we keep on repeating this process of drawing new candidate solutions and if the new candidate solution is better than the best we have so far we replace best if not we just throw it out we we we, we don't want it, so we forget about it. And how, how many times do we repeat this process? Well, we, we can fix any stopping criterion we may wish, maybe until the best solution satisfies some minimum quality, or, or we do this for a certain amount of time, or what is most common, we do this a certain number of iterations and in the end we return the best solution we have found so far and, and, and that's it. So for instance if we use this to try to solve the traveling salesman problem with nine cities, each solution would be represented with a vector of nine elements and, and we can use just the integers for that. So each integer would denote a certain city. And what we do is in the first iteration, we draw a random uh, sequence of, of these cities. And in the so far, this is the best we have found because we have only one, so it has to be the best. And then we repeat the process of drawing more and more random solutions. So we draw a second random solution, we compare it with the best we have so far, and if this is better, we keep it as the best. If not, we just forget about it. Then we draw a third random solution, we compare it with the best we have obtained so far. If this third one is better than the best, we keep it. That one would replace the, the best, would become the best now. And if it's not better than the best we have found so far, we forget about it. And we repeat this process. And at the end, in this case, we do it for 10 iterations and we would return the, the best solution found up, up until now. How good is random search? So pretty bad, right? I mean, there, there are very few things you can think of that, that are worse than this, because you, you could even uh, draw the same solution again and, and you would have to evaluate it and compare it again. So, so it's pretty wasteful. But let, let's formalize this a little bit more. So to do that, we, we can wonder how likely is to find the optimal solution, and I'm going to assume that there's one for simplicity, how likely is to find the unique optimal solution among m possible solutions 
in n iterations okay that's the the question we we would like to answer to try to get an intuition about how good or bad random search is and if you think about it well if you draw just one candidate solution what's the probability that that candidate solution you just drew is the optimal and since there are n possible solutions and you have just drawn one and they're all equally likely all draws are equally likely to to hit the target then the probability of, of hitting the target in any given iteration is one divided by m it's a, a draw is independent so so this would apply to any any given iteration and we want to compute the probability of hitting the target in n iterations and that means the probability of hitting the target in at least one of these n iterations okay if, if we hit it in at least once in at least one iteration then we've got the best and, and that's it if we hit it twice by chance okay we, we still have the best and to compute the probability of hitting the target in at least one iteration every time you hear at least in probability it's it's good practice to think about the complement event so because at, at least one is one two three four up to up to n in this case but the complement is just not hitting it at all so it's much easier to compute it so we're gonna say that the probability of hitting the target in at least one iteration is one minus the probability of not hitting the target in any of the n iterations and that's the same since they're all independent uh, that would be one minus the probability of not hitting the target in one iteration raised to the power of n okay and and the probability of not hitting the target in one iteration is one minus one divided by m so basically we've computed th this would be the probability of hitting the target in n iterations and we can we can draw that function the probability of hitting the target the unique target we're, we're making that assumption as a function of the number of iterations uh, we've done this for a certain m uh, 10 million and the graph looks like this why have i plotted the graph just up until the number of iterations equals the number of possible solutions well because beyond this case you're better off just doing exhaustive search right if, if you look at all possible solutions the m solutions and you do it um, in a in an ordered fashion okay you don't repeat any solutions then you're guaranteed to obtain the the best possible solution so beyond when n is greater than m uh, when the number of iterations is greater than the number of possible solutions you, we're better off doing exhaustive search okay but what, what is interesting is that if we do use random search and we do it with as many iterations as possible solutions that the, there are the probability of success would be only about 63 uh, percent at least for this uh, for, for this size of the search space okay 63 percent how come so low well because we it's very likely that we will be repeating many candidate solutions that we have already seen before and and we are re-evaluating them but but that that really is is not not good is that so so basically this this would be the graph that we would obtain and in this particular case uh, if you for instance draw um, about as many iterations as half the size of the solution uh, space you would get a probability of roughly 40 percent of hitting the target what is really interesting is that if we actually um, plot this function for different uh, sizes of the um, of the solution space so i'm gonna vary m here what we see is that this graph really i mean it doesn't change at all nearly it all looks very similar for any size of the solution space 
this graph from m equals 10 to m equals infinity basically the graph looks pretty much the same and and actually this this limit here th this uh, this number that we said is 63 percent the limit when m increases is is exactly yeah 63.2 percent i mean exactly it's one minus one divided by e. but the important point here is that this graph actually we, we can we can memorize it because it's valid for any any size of the search space and it's it's telling us yeah basically that for instance if you want a probability of hitting the target of at least 50 percent you would need roughly a to explore 70 percent of the search space and you can you can do this um F formally and and I mean you you just do that quickly with pen and paper and you can answer the question how many iterations do we need to have a, a certain probability of, of success so all in all random search is is not a very good strategy it's very simple it's pure exploration and we're gonna use it at cer certain points as part of meta heuristics but just using that is is not very good okay so guys i'll i'll see you later in the next video cheers bye bye